Resonances can be destructive, and rumor has it that there are singers, women who take a, a wine glass, and they do exactly what I did. They do this. They listen carefully. They generate that frequency with their voice. They increase the volume of the voice, and then the rumor has it that, bang, the glass goes. In other words, the amplitude of the glass becomes so large that you get so high, so close to resonance, and so much power goes into it because of the volume of the voice that the glass breaks. I'm going to try to break a glass with you, and you'll see that it is not easy. I have here a wine glass. It's almost the same as the one I have here, uh, there. And we can illuminate that glass with a strobe light, which you see here, and I'm going to show you there the display of that strobe light. And the reason why we strobe it is that we want you to see, as we excite the exact frequency of the glass, we want you to see the motion of the glass. And the way we can make you see the motion is by strobing it not exactly at the frequency of the sound, but a little bit different frequency. So you will see the stroboscopic motion then of the glass. So I can already, I will make it darker shortly, but I want you to see at least most of this. I can generate then the 470 hertz, which is very close to the resonant frequency. This is the tone that we will use. We will increase the volume, and then we will try to hit that resonance just right. We may be off by a few hertz. We have to be right on within a hertz, and then we'll see where we can make the glass break. Now, I want to warn you, the sound is going to be very strong. So you may, as the time goes on, as we go to higher volume, you may want to turn, you may want to close your ears. In fact, I will use this to protect my ears, and I will even use this to protect my eyes, in case the glass might break, which I doubt whether it will, but who knows. All right, so let's make it very dark. So you see here the glass, it's not doing very much, and I'm now going to increase the volume of the sound. I'm going to cover my ears now. You already begin to see some motion. I'm not sure that I am on resonance. Increase the volume. Now changing the frequency. Getting very close. Getting very close. There it goes. I mentioned that resonances can be very destructive, and there are some striking examples in history. In fact, you may have, when there's a storm, you may have seen the traffic signs, which 
just a sign on a pole that the traffic sign starts doing this. Which is strange because there's a wind. Wind is like a spectrum of all kinds of frequencies. It's like blowing air into a musical instrument. And then this traffic sign just picks out the frequency that it likes. And then if the wind is strong enough, it could be very destructive. And the most ex striking example of destruction is that of a bridge which was built. And that is the Tacoma Bridge, the West Coast, which is very dramatic. And of course, I will have to show you that movie. You will see what the wind can do to a bridge. So we'll start this movie and then we'll make it dark. On the 1st of July, 1940, a delegation of citizens met in Washington state. The weather was beautiful, the occasion historic, and the speech making and fanfare altogether appropriate. This was the grand opening of the Tacoma Narrows Bridge. From the beginning, the bridge, which spanned Puget Sound between Seattle and Tacoma, was traveled in style, as well it should have been. The Tacoma Narrows Bridge was one of the longer suspension bridges on Earth. And if somebody hadn't overlooked something, it probably would have remained one of the longer suspension bridges on Earth. The problem wasn't that right from the beginning, a lot of people didn't pay a lot of attention to details. They did. But somewhere along the line, and this was obvious in the end, it looks as if someone forgot the significance of resonance. Among other things, the Tacoma Narrows Bridge was the most spectacular Aeolian harp in history. Unfortunately, its first performance was destined to run only about four months. In the meantime, she was a beautiful bridge. Beautiful, but a little strange. Even before construction was completed, people observed its peculiar behavior. That was because, even in a light breeze, ripples ran along the bridge. After a while, one of the local humorists called her Galloping Gertie. And for fairly obvious reasons, the name stuck, at least until the 7th of November, 1940. Then as now, Seattle and Tacoma were sports-minded cities. For four months, a regional sport was to drive across the bridge on a windy day. While some claimed it was like riding a roller coaster, others found it a little disconcerting to see the car in front disappear. How popular this bridge sport was, or to what extent it might have spread across the country, is anybody's guess. On November 7th, 1940, the winds were relatively moderate, about 40 miles per hour. A new mode appeared. Rather than ripple, the bridge began to twist. A wind of 40 miles per hour is not too strong, but it was strong enough to start the bridge twisting violently. At 11 a.m., it fell. Amazing. Amazing what resonance can do.